Hello, and welcome to Vendetta on the Commodore 64. And you can see this was released by System 3 uh, fairly early in 1990. And it starts off pretty well, we've got this nice intro sequence. And the, well, the gist of it is that you're an ex-military sort of chap, and your brother and his daughter have been kidnapped, so uh, you're going to go and rescue them and sort out the bad guys. It's a fairly, it's fairly influenced by 80s action films like Commando and things like that. Um, and uh, Matt Gray does this intro music, which is really great. It's very, very dark. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's, there is no in-game music. So, apart from a little jingle at the end of the game, this is the only music in the game, which is a real shame. It's. Um, Anyway, let's get started. So I'm playing the cartridge version here. The game was released on tape, disc and cartridge. The tape version, I've had a quick look at. The multi-load's not great. It's pretty tedious. There's no loading music or anything like, like there was in, you know, um, many other sort of multi-load games of the time. Um, which is a bit of a shame, it makes the multi-load much longer, feels much longer. But um, yeah, so I wouldn't recommend playing that version, stick to the cartridge version. And uh, well, we'll start at level 1, and uh, just a quick look at the status panel here. Uh, the bottom left is a clock, you've got an hour to complete the game. You've only got one life, um, and when you lose a life, um, you can restart the level that you're on, but the time doesn't reset. So you've only got one hour of gameplay time, regardless of how many lives you, you, you use up. Um, next to that is a, like, like a camera, <laughs> I suppose I state the game a bit, it's a camera spool. I suppose uh, there's a lot of youngsters who may not know uh, what that actually is, since we've all gone digital. And uh, to the right of that is, that shows you what you're holding at the minute, we're just holding nothing, just using our fists. Right, let's get started. Right, so let's rock! Uh, it's a bit uh, 80s meathead uh, intro. Right, so you start off with no weapons. Well, I think you've got a knife, which is pretty useless. You, you're just as well using your fists. Right, that was it. So you can see it's. It's fairly similar to System 3's Last Ninja games. Uh, this came out after Last Ninja 2, and even though it looks pretty similar, it doesn't use the same engine. Um, I believe John Twitty left System 3 to go and form Vivid Image, and I remember reading a magazine interview with the programmer of this, uh, Stan Shemry, that uh, uh, John Twitty didn't leave any source code around. I think he was. I think he was on hand to advise, so he, he rebuilt this engine, which works pretty similar to the Last Ninja games. But the controls, I think some people felt the controls of the Last Ninja games were a bit too complex, so they've tried to simplify them for this game. But somehow it's managed to make it more complex. Um, I never owned this back in the day, but. Uh, I've tried to play it on and off over the years, but I got frustrated by the controls and I just didn't really get into it. But uh, I've been giving it a serious go recently. And I found out the best way to play it uh, is to use diagonals for movement. So I'm using bottom right to run bottom right. If you try and use up, down, left, right, it gets a bit confusing. So stick to the diagonals to move around and you can't go wrong. So you start with no weapons. And the combat's pretty hard to start with. And I think that's quite realistic. Um, combat is going to be hard and scrappy if, if it's, you know, um, hand to hand. I think that's actually done quite well. But after the first, this is the first screen, after the second screen here, you, you, you pick up a weapon and after that you don't have to do any more hand to hand. But it's just, it's trying to do these first two screens. He's flashing now, he's almost gone. I mean, I'm making it look fairly easy. I think Mom's out of health though. Just managed to do it. And uh, one good thing about this game is that your health goes back up um, pretty quickly. You don't have to, it's not like Last Ninja 2 where you have to find um, hamburgers for extra lives. Um, 
So what you may notice by entering a screen is a lot, some little flashing crosses that tells you where things are, but only it doesn't do it on a second level for some reason. But it does on this level. But it's it's pretty finicky trying to find the exact spot to pick up things. Uh, I, I guess that's fairly similar to the last Ninja games, but it seems a bit worse in this one. I think there was something over here. I think that's ammo. So now we can press space. Then you can see we've got grades now, and we've got a gun. And the ammo isn't unlimited, but there's normally you can just keep going back to pick up uh, ammunition for it. So you don't tend to run out. Yeah, there's no, I say, there's no in-game music. It's just sound effects that are by, apparently by many acts of noise, but they're not very good. So. They're fairly so-so, and are quite sparse, and the way it does adds a bit more realism to it, and the game, yeah, it does, it does feel more grounded than the last Ninja games. Um, I think the graphics in this game are brilliant, uh, I mean they're really pushing the engine uh, here. So now I've got the, the gun, you, 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 it's pretty easy to kill people with it, but I suppose that again it's quite realistic. There you go, he's dead already. Nice blood splatter. Yeah, like the last Ninja games, uh, uh, there's a, a couple of seconds while it draws the screen. It doesn't bother me, but uh, it does seem to bother some people. I remember seeing some reviews of this. The, uh, I think Commodore Format did a, a review that wasn't so kind on it. See some more flashing crosses, just tells us we can go to the ladder. So yeah, uh, like I say, I never played this back in the day, I'm quite a new player to it. Um, once you get past the frustration of the controls, I actually found it quite engrossing to play. Yeah, you can see those flashing crosses, you saw. pick up a disc. And if you, if you didn't, if you don't clock where the flashing crosses are, you can exit the room, come back in, and it will show you again. Generally, I don't think there's more than three items in the room. What you have to do is collect bits of evidence, and this will become more apparent later on why you need those. Um, in terms of puzzles, there's not too many puzzles in the game. It's not like the last Ninja games, so there's quite a lot of puzzles. Um, uh, there are a couple, well, there's one in this level and maybe one at the last level, but in between that there isn't really any puzzles. In the gameplay, uh, it, it feels a little... I mean, the gameplay is fine, it's, it's, it's just the game design, it feels just feels a little it's kind of, kind of underdeveloped. Right, so we've got, I think we've picked up the disc already, and we've got this sort of code book. So you press F1, and that activates your camera spool, and then you just move right to select different things. It's quite annoying, you can't move right and left. you just got to keep moving right until you get it loops around again, if you miss something. So we select, we, want, we can't use the disc yet because it's, it's the computer's coded, so we have to... Get in the right bloody position to use this code, but there we go. So it tells us the codes. Um, it, it changes every time, so it's one, then four zeros, then all ones. So, and then we can go to the disc. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a sort of puzzle that puts people off, I think. So was it one, then four zeros, one, two, three? Yeah, access code. Okay, so now it's unlocked. And we've got this, uh, it's like a pass card. I mean, uh, we need this to unlock the weapons on the vehicle, for the vehicle stages. So, it isn't just isometric, there is actually uh, a driving stage in between the levels. Uh, space again to cycle through the weapons.
One annoying thing is that to pick anything up, you have to not be holding anything. Then it's firing down to pick up. I, oh, I can't remember whether the bloody uh, objects were that I had to pick up. Need to exit the room and come back. Okay, so it's just there. That's a Uzi. Um, the different weapons don't make too much difference, I, I find, anyway. Yeah, let's say that I, th I think it's. I personally I find it quite quite engrossing to play uh, it's, uh, these stages. Once you get the hang of the controls. I think the isometric thing, uh, graphics, they uh, work pretty well. I mean, there's some annoying collision issues now and then. It's not, it's not a full uh, isometric environment like you'd find, you know, like Head Over Heels and things like that. Um, it's kind of pseudo environment. It's, it's done well enough. I mean, I suppose it's a bit like Last Ninja Games, but right. So we can play the videos. I think that's a picture of the bad guy. Is it the bad guy or, can, or no? That's the, the video of of the daughter. I think it's a bit hard to tell. Let's have a look. I'm not sure of that one. Right, uh, anyway, just play these videos. This one displays the System 3 logo for some reason. We just need a bit of evidence here. Yeah, so what you do is you have to collect the evidence because when you're in the driving stages, um, you occasionally get pulled over by the police and they ask you for a random bit of evidence. That, uh, if you've not collected all of the evidence, you, it's game over if, if, if you don't have it. Um, that's a bit of an annoying feature. To be honest. Uh, it's just there to, to force you to collect it and search all the rooms. Uh, like I say, I think the game design just, just feels a little underdeveloped. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't feel quite as well done as it was in Last Ninja, uh, well Last Ninja 2 in particular. Um, and not everybody's a fan of the Last Ninja games, you know, and I get that. And if you're not a fan of those games, chances are you're not going to like this. But even if you are a fan of them, I mean I'm quite a fan of 1 and 2, but I, I never, it's, uh, it took me a long time to just even spend more than 10 minutes playing this game, I just, just couldn't get into it. Each level, I think there's four. Now, th this is where it gets hard to hear because the enemy have got the enemy's got a gun. Yeah, so I'm actually getting it's, you're just kind of spraying and hoping. Uh, yeah, uh, again, it's I mean, it's really realistic. Uh, you know, you're not just gonna walk in the room and just shoot the guy right away. I mean, you know, it's gonna take a few shots. Uh, you know, it's you do actually fear for your life uh, a little bit uh, because you just spraying bullets everywhere. I think that's quite well done, actually. So I think the combat's fine. Uh, I like the combat. And I like walking around these levels. So there's not much to do in them, but the feeling of immersion's quite good. Right, so we're at the car, which is an F40. Uh, we need the key. Yes. Just go to the door and. Activate it, and here we are in the driving section. Now, when Zap reviewed this, the, they gave it 90%, and the reviewers seem to think this driving section was great and that it rivaled uh, Power Drift and Torb Outrun, which were games that had just been out for a couple of months. Um, you can see that it doesn't clearly doesn't rival those. Uh, um, it's really, it's not that, it's not awful, but I, I think the the actual roads is fine, uh, the, the scenery movement is a bit odd, it's a bit kind of flickery and jumpy, and it's, you can see it's sort of, the positions are mirrored down our side. So, but there are forks in the road, but we've picked up the map and the level, and that, that lets us see where we're going. And, because, because we picked up the, uh, we solved the puzzle and picked up the pass card, 
whatever it's called, uh, the uh, weapons are activated, so it's got surface uh, to air missiles for these helicopters. Press F1 for that, and F3 for um, sort of machine guns that I never used, to be honest. And F5 is supposed to toggle the turbo on and off, but uh, I, I personally, oh, it does is to it's to press it now. Just toggles that light on and off, because it goes from red to green, but it doesn't. You're supposed to press fire to activate turbo, I think, but uh, it doesn't seem to do anything. So that doesn't make much difference. So there's no health uh, in this level, and there's, it's just a time limit. Uh, it's just the longer you take, the less time you have for the rest of the levels, I suppose. There's no real challenge here, but the controls are pretty awful. As you can see, I'm skating about all over the place. Um, what I find is if you, if you slow down, it is a bit more controllable. I suppose that's, that's what they were maybe going for, but that doesn't make any sense. Because you're driving a high performance sports car, you know, you expect it to be able to handle pretty well at high speeds, don't you? So it doesn't really quite make sense. You know, if you're driving a box standard uh, uh, family saloon or something, then, uh, you, you know, understandable it's not going to handle quite as well at high speeds, but, uh, you know, th this should handle much better than it does. But you get used to it, but yeah, the controls are pretty slippery. And the graphics, yeah, they're okay. I mean, it's, 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 the the side graphics aren't great. The, the, the actual road itself is fine. Side effects are fine. Switch to machine guns, you can see what they're like. Just just indiscriminately just destroy your locales. You don't get penalised, I'm sure some of these are just civilian cars. Yeah, just uh just blow them all up, why not? F1 again, the controls are a bit annoying, I have to press F1 and F3 to flick, but uh, I suppose you're limited to what you can do with a one button joystick, aren't you? Ah, yeah, that was a bit tight. Ah. I'm sorry, this is still more fun than, uh, than Road Blasters on the C64, to be fair. I don't think you can actually take a wrong fork. The car just seems to decide what fork you're going depending on what side of the road you're used. If you're on the left hand side it just gives you the left fork. I mean I guess that makes the game flow a bit better. Because the forks in the road and turbo charge were a bit annoying because you took the wrong fork all it did was just lead you to a dead end and you blew up. Then it chucked you back a bit. This is a bit more flow here. Right, we're slowing down so that I think that means we're at the Next level, arrived at army camp. So here we are, level three. Yeah, right. Again, I think the graphics are pretty nice. There's some nice shading uh, in some of these levels. Some nice sort of lighting. Uh, you see it. Uh, throughout the game. Get the door open. Yeah, this level for some reason things don't flash on the screen. I'm not sure why that is, because they flash in all the other levels. So you've got to do a fair bit of tedious searching to find out where things are. That's the map for the uh, driving section. Might be the only thing in the room. Nope. More evidence. If I'd forgotten that and if I got asked for it by the police later on then I would have been in trouble. I presume that's more evidence. It's a bit hard to work out what some of these objects are. I think that was... I don't think anything's going to flash, is it? I think that's... 
Yeah, I don't know why that is, but yeah, I don't think there's generally more than three things in a room. And a lot of these rooms like this one, they're, they're, you know, well, it's not a room, but it's a screen. A lot of screens don't have anything on them anyway. Okay, I'm almost out of ammo here. So should the Uzi. Yeah, the, I think the character, I quite like the way he's drawn it. He's a bit chunky and a bit blocky, but he's, he sort of captures that 80s sort of meathead action hero uh, pretty well, I think. I'm not sure there's anything in this room, if I remember. I certainly can't, uh, I don't think there's anything in this room. It's not often a run out of ammunition uh, that I must have forgotten to pick up. Uh, some ammo somewhere. Right, uh, okay, this looks, initially looks quite hard, but it's not actually that hard, but you can lob the grenades. You've only got one, make it count. There we go. Blast seems to have killed them. Yeah, I think if, I, if I'd bought this back in the game, uh, I mean, I don't think I would have been too disappointed with it. I think it's... I mean, I don't think it's uh, a great game. Uh, I mean, Zap gave it 90%, like I said, but I don't think it's quite as good as that. I really don't. Part part of the problem is that is the game's it's pretty easy once you know what you're doing, but uh, and it's quite short. And, uh, and really, I mean, it's, the gameplay is fine uh, as far as it goes. I mean, but it's fairly limited. To, if, there's, if there's more puzzles, maybe, but uh, there's not really that many. There must be some ammo or something here. I'm sure there's something in this screen. Doesn't help that you've got to be in exactly the right position. Well, maybe there's nothing in here then. Right, oh, I seem to have got more ammunition back. Don't remember that. Right. Again, I don't know if there's anything in this screen. I just wish there'd been some in-game music, just just to like, like the last Ninja games, just just to add a bit of atmosphere, because because the music really, because the gameplay isn't much better than the last Ninja games, but the, the music just adds that extra uh, bit of atmosphere. It does help a lot, but it's a bit sparse here, I'm afraid. Well, I didn't find anything there. That might trip me up later on. There might be a bit of evidence, some of that I've missed, but I just can't remember. There are a couple of bugs in the game. Sometimes, if you don't ex exit the screen in the right place, so it, it, it throws you into some weird um, bit of the level that you can't get out of. But the only way to get out of it is to just press restore to restart the level. Find some shoes. Again, I think the, the environments are pretty good. I, I mean, it's a, a reasonable attempt at a little army base. Each level is about 10 screens, so it can't make them too big. But, um, no, I think that was everything in this level. I've I got a feeling I've missed something, but um, 
We'll see. I need to get back in the bloody car if I get to the right bit of the screen. There we go. Right, so we're off again. Again, I just like the surface to air missiles. Uh, I don't bother with the uh, machine guns. Can't be bored constantly switching between F uh, F1 and F3. Yeah, the controls are really slippery, but uh, yeah, I guess it's there to keep it interesting. There's not much variety in these you know, driving sections, from level to level, that they're all pretty much the same, just the horizon graphic changes. Th this is us uh, racing towards the airport, I think. I'll, pr I'll try F5. Press and fire, it doesn't seem to go any faster. Oh, police have caught up with me, pulled me over. Yeah, this is quite annoying, probably the most pointless feature in the game. They pull you over, they ask you if, what's the big idea, and you better have some answers. Have you got... Let's have a look. It's really do you have, isn't it? It's not have you got, right there. Um, have you got... What the shit, what did he ask for? <laughs> I was too busy talking, I didn't, didn't see what he asked for. You swine. So now it's game over and I can't restart the game, can I? So because I missed what he was asking for, it's basically terminated the game. You can't restart it because I gave him the wrong thing. So yeah, so that's Vendetta for you. It's not a bad game. I wouldn't say it was a great game. I'll give it six and a half out of ten. It's, it's got its flaws, but it's been grossing for a while. Um, right, um, yeah, six and a half for Vendetta. See you in the next video.